Hello, we are Savannah Lowe and Kirsten Moody. We will be presenting a video on how to reduce and manage a distal radius fracture. The management of a distal radius fracture includes the reduction of the fracture, application of the plaster of Paris, as well as counseling about post pop care. Additional necessities include x-ray of the fractured limb, as well as the materials needed to apply the pop. The radius is one of the two forearm bones and is located on the side of the thumb. The part of the, that is connected to the wrist joint is called the distal radius. A fracture of this bone commonly occurs due to falling on an outstretched hand. Distal radius fractures are one of the most common types of fractures. They account for around 25% of fractures in the pediatric population and up to 18% of all fractures in the elderly population. Distal radius fractures occur more commonly in males than females with a peak age of 10 to 14 years old. There are many types of distal radius fractures, but we will be focusing on the management of extra-articular completely displaced fractures in this video. Distal radius fractures are often diagnosed based on the symptoms reported by the patient as well as radiological imaging. Patients often report a history of a trauma or a fall with immediate pain, tenderness, bruising, swelling and deformity of the wrist. The gold standard that we use is an x-ray of the forearm. This allows us to determine the extent of the fracture, if there's any translation or angulation and how we plan our management going forward. Here is an example of what the x-ray may look like, with the associated typical findings on the slide. Inspiration for this concept was given to us by Dr. Jeannie McCall. These sponges represent our distal radius fracture. This is the distal end, and this is our proximal end, with the periosteum being represented by this bandage. We can see that our distal radius has been fractured with the ends overlapping. In order to reduce this, proximal axial traction alone is not sufficient to reduce the fracture. For this reason, we need to first disimpact or exaggerate the deformity to unhook the bones, then apply axial traction and reduce the fracture. Here we can see three x-rays visually describing the reduction of the fracture in the previous video. Step 1, disimpacting or further exaggerating the fracture. Step 2, applying axial traction. And step 3, reducing the fracture. Three-point pressure is extremely important to consider when reducing a fracture. Simply pushing the fracture down with one point pressure will not reduce the fracture. Even two point pressure will not reduce the fracture. We need to apply simultaneous three point pressure, pushing up at the apex and down on the other side of the fracture to keep it in place. The materials to apply a pop include gloves and an apron, a linen saver or newspaper, cotton wool, plaster of Paris, and this comes in different sizes. And finally, cold water. It is important for beginners to use cold water as it allows for a slower setting of the plaster of Paris and prevents burning the patient. Once you have adequately reduced the fracture, it is important to place the hand in a slightly flexed on the deviated position. You then apply the ortho wall to just below the elbow with the 50% overlap, ensuring the MCPs and thumb are left mobile. Once the cotton wool has been applied, you then take a roll of the plaster of Paris and submerge it into the cold water. Once wet, remove the plaster from the water and begin applying it to the arm, starting at either end. Apply the plaster with a 50% overlap to ensure adequate thickness to offer stability. Be mindful during the application to ensure you don't apply it too tight as it could put the patient at risk of developing compartment syndrome. Lastly, it is important to roll the cotton wool over at both ends to prevent skin irritation. Once you are satisfied with the cast application, wet your hand slightly and rub over the surface of the pop to smooth it out. It is pivotal in molding the cast to apply three-point molding to support the reduction and offer optimal stability for healing. Three-point molding will be described shortly. Three-point molding is a technique of applying a cast where the plaster is molded to apply pressure at the site of the fracture. It prevents redisplacement until bone healing occurs. Post-pop counselling forms a critical part of the process. Once the pop has been applied, the patient should return for a follow-up in one week. However, before discharging the patient, it is essential to counsel them on the following points seen on the slide. As part of post-pop counselling, it is important that patients understand the risk of developing compartment syndrome. The symptoms can be seen on the slide. If patients experience any of these symptoms, they are to present to a healthcare facility as soon as possible. 
In conclusion, distal radius fractures are common fractures with typical associated x-ray findings. Don't forget to first exaggerate the fracture before reducing it. Thanks for watching.